Okay, greetings, brothers and sisters. Just a few things to get to here. Maybe a few more on my other toolbar. Or this I don't know if this will be a shorter video. I might do a some sort of audio at the end. But let's start here with the BRICS currency. One of my viewers sent me this. So BRICS announces a blockchain-based payment system. Um, and it is to create a common currency for all those people, which would mean they're, you know, the BRICS is um, these various countries that are forming their own sort of economic block to get rid of the U.S. power brokers as the, you know, world was the dollar as a world reserve currency and the U.S. having the strongest economy, right? And they're moving forward with this thing, right? And um, what is the BRICS currency and is, and is the U.S. dollar in trouble? And the difficult realities of the BRICS de-dollarization efforts, you know, they want to stop U.S. Um, petrodollar more than anything else and sell oil and have oil being sold in their own currencies here. You guys right remember that Gaddafi wanted to do that with a gold dinar and Gaddafi's no longer alive. He was um, sodomized with a sword. You know, like, and so that's how important this thing is. Anything that's a threat to the U.S. economy and the U.S. dollar is, you know, will result in that kind of, um, this would be, you know, World War III with China. And then one of my viewers sent me this. This is Microsoft, um, whatever their thing is here. Map reveals best place to live, places to live in the U.S. if nuclear war breaks out. And so um, I don't see this map is very small. Fears of nuclear apocalypse in World War III abound. Some prospective home buyers in the U.S. may want to reconsider the locations they're looking for in for property in. Um, so then they have these places, um, you know, all that stuff. But it's interesting that this is becoming regular news. Here's the map. You can see this area here. So this is very unpopulated. As you get out here, these are the big cities they're targeting here. And then, um, you know, <laughs> this is all where all the, the black dots are is where all the people live. A Filipino villager is nailed to a cross for the first for, for the thirty fifth time on Good Friday to pray for world peace. Maybe he has permanent holes in his hand. Um, he's he's done this thirty five times, or they've done it thirty five times. I'm not sure if it's the same guy. And so, um, you know, the whole being nailed to the cross has no significance, right? <laughs> There's no spiritual benefit to that. My wife and I were talking about this in terms of um, the, um, you know, the, uh, there was this movie called Stigmata. And this is, um, I think it's big in the um, Latin countries or the um, countries in Latin America, South America. But, you know, Stigmata is these, where you people believe from the hands like Jesus. You know, Jesus' crucifixion wasn't his finest moment, and the celebration of the cross in which Jesus, Jesus was tortured and uh, you know, humiliated and killed for being a spiritual person isn't a positive thing, right? I mean, tomorrow's Easter, and celebrating his crucifixion isn't, you know, they've made it into something that it shouldn't be. You know, his teachings, his spiritual evolution... The things that, you know, he was, um, he was a lot of blood and gore. This movie was really, you know, it's a hard movie to watch and sit through. And it's just, um, there's a lot of blood, you know, drinking the blood of Christ, eating his body. I mean, just all of it. We got you to do that as a Catholic. And it, they're celebrating the wrong things about Jesus. And it wasn't his finest moment, right? It was showing you that, you know, a spiritual person, especially in the Western world, in the countries where white people live, these countries in you know uh, Middle East and Europe and these places, they kill saints, right? Certainly in America now as well, killing the saints, killing spiritual people, destroying spiritual people, is a thing that they do. 
And so it shouldn't be, you know, it shouldn't be what people make it into. It isn't a positive thing. Okay, I'm editing this video. I want to add this here. And me saying that this is about not being Jesus's finest moment about the crucifixion. What I mean by that is, um, you know, the part of the crucifixion isn't about Jesus. It's what happens to people who try to give God to people, right? <laughs> like you, people who try to help people become spiritual and talk about the things that you need to do to be spiritual. And then in Jesus's case, he criticized the powers that be on top of it. And people in Jesus's, you know, his core disciples, one of them betrayed him, another denied him, and the other doubted him, right? Judas betrayed him, Peter denied him, and uh, Thomas doubted him, right? right? Doubting Thomas. And the spiritual, third spiritual master of the Sajmark meditation that I do said, you know, there's a ratio, like he called it, you know, the Jesus ratio, that one out of 12 of your disciples will always turn on you. Maybe some more will. And so that's kind of a thankless job, right? You know, when parents know, know this, um, you do a lot of things for your kids that they never know about. The first whatever amount of years you put up with them, waking you up in the middle of the night and crying and all the things you do and changing diapers and all the stuff you do, feeding them and you know, all that stuff. <laughs> you know, like for all of us, like none of us remember that. Like we don't remember, like we don't remember what, you know, how difficult it is on the parents to have young children and just all the messes that you have to clean up as a parent, all the, you know, your kids are just you know, doing all the things they do as toddlers and all the way up. And then all the things you do for them that they have no idea about, like going to a crappy job and eating crap all day and doing something that's hard, you know, just to put some food on the table, whatever it is, right? Like the things that you have to endure, the humiliation of your job, the difficulty and all the, you know, the things that you you have to um, suffer through in a marriage just to, you know, keep things together as a family and, you know, whatever you might do. And your kids just aren't aware of it. Like, you you know, they grow up and we weren't aware of it for our parents. And, you know, maybe you become a little bit more aware of it when you become a parent yourself. But, you know, you don't really understand it, right? And then your kids tell you you hate you when you, they turn teenagers or whatever it might be. And with spiritual people, it's way worse than that. And, you know, there's, I mean, India is a good place to be a saint. It's a place where saints are celebrated. Of course, there's a lot of frauds who are also celebrated there as well. And I'm, you know, talking about the heartfulness meditation thing and all the fake gurus that go along with it. But they are at least, there's some level of understanding that spiritual people are meant to be celebrated. It's woven into the culture for thousands of years. But other places in the world, the spiritual person is a threat to the people that, co that govern, the, that control the system and the system itself, right? Because the system itself is usually ungodly. And a spiritual person will, you know, bring um, uh, an awareness and a, you know, change of orientation to the people that will hurt the system. Like the materialistic system we have now, if everyone became spiritual, it would collapse because it's a pleasure-based, hedonistic-based system, right? And so people who are bring an awareness that, you know, all the things that you're seeking in the material world of fame and fortune and, you know, pleasures and all these things are why you're here is a threat to the system and the people that run it. So, you know, not just that, but the, the masses turn on you as well because they don't want to give up all the things that they, you know, enjoy and things and they want, you know, they don't want to change. And, and so the crucifixion is really a representation of that. It's not a oh, this was such a wonderful thing that he sacrificed his only son, like the way that they spun it, that people think about it, that's not at all what's happened here. You know, what really happened is Jesus tried to give spirituality to people to whatever extent, and they killed him for it and tortured him and humiliated him, right? They were spitting on him and things like this. You know, like it's, it's brutal, and, you know, this is what happens. I mean, it just shows you how bad people are, and, you try to give them God, and this is what they do to you. So it isn't a celebratory moment. It isn't something we should honor like it was a great day and it was a great, you know, whatever it was. 
and that it was part of some divine plan and Jesus was doing this just to sacrifice himself for your sins I mean it's just a way the powers that be have spun it so they can you know use it as a way to enslave people and in the religious sense the day should be celebrated it should be you know a reminder of how bad people suck and if you try to give them God in any real way this is what they do to you right um, and that's you know that's the true essence of Easter which itself isn't God isn't uh, Jesus's death. He didn't die in Easter. Easter is the holiday of Estora. Uh, Estor, I don't know what it is, how it's pronounced, but it's a pagan god that was celebrated. That's where the whole bunny and, you know, the eggs, it's a whole legend of a bunny sitting on uh, eggs, right? And actually now chicks, this is, was the whole kind of the thing with the Easter bunny. That's all pagan, right? That's all, has nothing to do with Jesus. And it was celebrated on the the spring equinox, right? This is the, you know, the, um, the, the solstices and the equinox. And it's two equinoxes, you know, the fall one and the, which is, you know, Halloween. And so this is a celebration of uh, the, the day itself has zero to do with Jesus, right? <laughs> it has nothing to do with his crucifixion. Like the whole thing's just a lie. But anyways, let's get back to it here. So somebody sent me this. This is Lizzo's Instagram. I am getting tired of putting up with being dragged by everyone in my life and on the internet. <laughs> this is Lizzo writing this. All I want is to make music and make people happy and help the world be a little better than how I found it. But I'm starting to feel like the world doesn't want me in it. Um, I'm constantly up against lies being told about me for clout and views being the butt of the joke every single time because of how I look. My character being picked apart by people who don't know me and disrespecting my name. I didn't sign up for this. Boop! I quit. Peace out. <laughs> and um, so this person, Elia Shefford, in case nobody told you today, you're special. <laughs> In case nobody made you believe you're special, your own words. Sometimes we need to, to be our own cheerleaders. If none of these comments help, I hope your words will. We love you, Queen Paris Hilton. <laughs> In case nobody told you, you're special. When does I Quit come out of Spotify? <laughs> On Spotify. You are so necessary, talented, and important. You also deserve peace. Whatever makes you happy, I support it. Sophia Bush, Kid Fury. All of this, the internet isn't real life. Protect you. We love you. Chloe Kent. Chloe Kent. I don't know who these people are. But they have check marks. But your DNA test came back 100%. That boop. So you can't. You <laughs> You, you defo can't let them win. You have to carry on and doing you and being the best version of you. This got 6,000 likes. Cara Dominica. She's also a check mark. Well, remember when her, you know, she um was very abusive and sexually inappropriate with her fellow, her dancers that work for her. Many of them were overweight. And she really mistreated them and she acted like a prima donna and um, talked about them sexually inappropriate things and forced them to do stuff. I covered this before. I can't remember all of it, but you guys might remember it. But um, there was a lawsuit. We'll take a look at that. Can't let the haters win, Mama Lizzo. You're loved. Keep on going. Girl, don't let them win. Stay off the internet. Hug up your, your man. Keep working. These are all, um, you know... These are all check marks, those, those ones were. So here it is. Lizzo, all the allegations made by former dancer as star announces exit from music industry. And so um, pop star Lizzo shocked fans by announcing that she's quitting music. And then she says all those things there. Um, last year, former, former members of her dance troupe filed claims of sexual harassment and weight slamming by Lizzo 
born Melissa Jefferson in a 44-page lawsuit. In the suit, dancers Ariana Davis, Nicole Rodriguez, and Crystal Williams detail allegations of assault, inappropriate sexual behavior, workplace misconduct, disability discrimination, and religious harassment against Lizzo and her production company, Big Girl, Big Touring, Inc. Lizzo previously hit back at the false allegations in a statement posted on social media, adding that the claims are unbelievable. There she is dancing down there, <laughs> doing her Lizzo stuff. Uh, but here are the accusations. In the file complaint, the dancer accused Lizzo of calling her calling attention to Davis weight gain and later berating her and then firing her on the spot and because she recorded a meeting because of a health condition. When R Rodriguez objected to Lizzo's treatment of Davis and resigned from the cast, Lizzo allegedly aggressively approached Rodriguez, Rodriguez and said she thought the 35-year-old would have hit her if one of the other dancers had intervened. The accusers testified to a sexually charged and uncomfortable environment they were allegedly forced to endure while working with Lizzo and her dance captain and co-defendant Quigley. It claims Lizzo began inviting cast members to take turns touching the new performers, catching dildos launched from the performers, poops, and eating bananas protruding from the performers' vajayjays during a visit to a strip club in Amsterdam. She allegedly pressured Davis to touch the boobs of the nude women and leading a chant of goading her. Finally, the chorus became overwhelming and mortified and Davis acquiesced in an attempt to bring the, to the end. Um, the, she felt like she was being badgered. Davis claims she soiled herself. There's these brutal things that were going on with the dancers. Claims she soiled herself because Lizzo was always berating the dancers because she was fearful of taking a washroom break in a 12-hour rehearsal. When she found an interval to change into clean clothes, the wardrobe department allegedly gave her a see-through garment. She was equipped to finish the rehearsal dancing in front of male crew members who were known to sexualize the dancers under less revealing scenarios while wearing completely transparent shorts and no undergarments. Um, so, you know, it goes on like this. It just goes on and on and on and on and on. But um, Lizzo mistreated her dancers according to their, you know, their testimony. And now she's quitting because everyone keeps on giving her a hard time. Details about King Charles' funeral plans revealed. Cancer is worse. Charles has been diagnosed with cancer last month. Um, I don't know what this publication is. But... Um, you know, it would be hilarious, this guy right here. <laughs> it'd be hilarious he waited all that time to become king, and then, like, he doesn't even hold this. <laughs> I mean, that would be just wonderful. Well, isn't it about time that Joe Biden stood up for transgender people and re-dedicated um, the Easter holiday? Joe Biden sparks fury by proclaiming Easter Transgender Visibility Day. Apparently this is it here. Here's the bunnies. Easter is a season of joy. Time of rebirth, renewal, faith, hope, and love. A time to remember that in the beauty of spring, the seeds of new opportunity our planet. And this spring, our future filled, is filled with unlimited possibilities that can multiply and grow because of all the good people here and throughout the country. Ladies and gentlemen, what I see looking across the South Lawn is a country made up of possibilities. Anything's possible in America. Remember who we are and we do it together. Okay, well that was what he said there. President Joe Biden sparked fury among conservatives on social media on Saturday after he proclaimed Sunday, March 31st, which happens to be the day Easter falls on this year, Trans Day, Transgender, Transgender Day of Visibility. The International Transgender Day of Visibility was created on March 31st, 2009, and has continued to be celebrated on March 31st for more than a decade. 
And so um, it's about time that people stop celebrating Jesus' death and celebrating, um, you know, something as noble as the transgender awareness that Joe Biden is pushing here. All right, so I want to add this to it. Um, this just came in. Franklin trailer, Michael Douglas says, Benjamin Franklin. I think Apple is sucky about copywriting their trailers, which is stupid, but I'll cover a little bit of this here. You are. I am. I am. Benjamin Franklin. See, he's such a horrible actor. He has no range or no... He can't do like an old English accent. He's just talking like he's the guy in... Um, you know, <laughs> romancing the stone or Wall Street. I mean, it's the same guy, right? The Congress has sent me here. It is a representative of the United States. Kaboom! To elicit France in our war against England. Okay. <laughs> it's just really bad. Such a horrible actor. Without your aid... The United States will end before it has begun. Boom. Well, this is big and important. What's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen here. Is France going to come to our aid? Like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen, Michael Douglas? Grandfather, how long must we stay? Until we win France to our side. Or we are hanged. Is there a third choice? Kaboom. His grandson is pretty funny. It's a limited series of <laughs> Diplomacy must never be a siege, but a seduction. Well, we both know you have trouble. He's trouble with the capital T. He's a Freemason, you know. He's a seductress. He knows how to seduce the ladies. You're up to something. Yeah, he's, he's up to something, that guy. I am plotting to deliver ships to the United States. No, you're up to something else. You're up to something else, you... Trickster. We have made an offer. Beware the Frenchman's promise. Don't listen to a Frenchman's promise. They don't, they don't, you know. They make promises they don't keep. Is everything all right? Possibly not. Not possibly not. <laughs> he delivers those lines. Someone is spying on us. Who could it be? Be careful. Be careful, the spies. France has nothing to gain joining with America. The British will defeat you. It may cost us. But it will cost you more. It'll cost you more. If the price is our lives, we'll pay it. <laughs> we'll pay it. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him. Look at him deliver those lives. <laughs> pay it. I don't know who I can trust. Well, we know he can't trust you, Gordon Kecko. Boom. There's just treachery going on left and right. Skullduggery. I'm here to help my country. But time is running out. Time's running out. What should we do? Who are you really? Who are what the world requires you to be? Wait, was he? He was a lover. He was a statesman, he was a lover. There he is, ready. Who's this dude? <laughs> Look at him diving. <laughs> what was those skulls there? Oh, right there, that one. Boom, look at those skulls playing the banjo. Playing the fiddle. This is a dangerous game. That's just the sort of game I like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he does. <laughs> I wonder how much they paid him. <laughs> it's horrible. King Charles attends Easter Sunday service in Windsor. No Princess Kate after cancer. And so apparently he showed up. His cancer is enough. He can function enough to show up for... Easter Sunday Mass to celebrate Jesus' uh, crucifixion. I guess rising from the dead, is it? I don't know. Um, there he is with Camilla, so we'll see what happens to Chucky. 
And then um, Port of Baltimore workers were embracing for a busy summer season. Now thousands face an uncertain future. Um, this is something I covered on my Apocalypse Now, you know, sort of a Hollywood celebrities dropping like flies thing, but it's more something that I would cover on this channel because, um, well, let's get into it here. So my wife told me last night there was another uh, barge that crashed into a bridge. And um, I searched for it, and there was nothing here. This is just about the Baltimore Bridge. And, um, you know, just the news is just about that. But then she was like, is it in um, Arkansas? So I searched Arkansas, but it was actually in Oklahoma. Oklahoma State Patrol says diverted traffic after a barge hit a bridge in the Arkansas River. Um, days after Baltimore, Arkan Oklahoma diverted traffic after a barge hit a bridge. These are very obscure publications, right? So a bar, another barge hit another bridge in Oklahoma. Now these things might happen occasionally right where something like that happened roads closed after barge hits bridge in oklahoma and this might be just something you know there's just like with the train where we saw the train that happened in east palestine um but then there's been these things with planes as well you know all this stuff happened with the trains in east palestine like there was that one sort of big thing that happened and then people are like oh this is happening all over the place there was like chemical spills and things like that. But then somebody sent me this this morning. Oh, it's on fire. Oh my God. I'm sorry. It's on fire. Mom. Holy sh I hope they're okay. I wonder if they're doing an emergency. Oh. No, it's still doing it. So this is, I don't know, um, uh, March 20th, 11 days ago, there was a Boeing jet that's um, on fire as it's heading into the Miami airport. So when America went after Russia um, with Ukraine as a proxy, a proxy war, that's war, right? That's out and out war, where... Um, you know, the backing of the Ukrainian government creating that, you know, the whole stuff with trying to uh, allow the Ukraine into NATO, you know, that is an act of war. Um, Russia and America are now at war, whether people want to see that or not. I mean, I think most people have a sense of that. But, you know, if you're paying somebody else, like um, if your neighbor or your relative hired somebody to come over to your house and beat you up, right? then that's an act of war or whatever. Like, that's, you know, that's an act of aggression. And that's what America's doing with the Ukraine, right? They're paying the Ukrainians to fight a war and take down Russia. And, you know, whatever's going on with China and the currency and these things and, you know, BRICS, that's another act of war. You know, any anything that goes after the American currency as the reserved currency, the dollar, petrodollar, is an act of war. It would take America down. And so there have been, you know, remember when the um, the refinery was hacked and there was no gas. Like, my wife and I were traveling, you know, about a week or two after that happened, while it was going on, actually. And there was places that were massive gas shortages because of a hack that they claimed was ha came out of Russia. And so, you know, there is going to be cyber attacks and hacking and you know if this is um if these plane crashes or these you know uh train you know this uh, barge hitting the uh, going back to the train crash in east palestine these are all you know bizarre things right and you're going to see more of these if they can do it if it can, you know can be done as an act of war but the other thing is could these be false flag things? Could this be something America is doing to itself? And then there's the you know the big picture thing is you know this is part of a divine plan. If something's happening, America collapsing, 
is part of a divine plan, right? Because that's what happens to empires. It happens over and over again. You study the the great empires over the, you know, whatever it is, the millennia. You study anything like that, dynasties and even in sports, things like that, and they collapse. They fall apart. Things aren't, you know, organizations and people aren't supposed to be dominant for a very long period of time. You study it in nature with, you know, a, um, like lions is a good example. There's always these young lions coming in and trying to steal the pride or whatever it is. It's just what happens, right? Um, throughout the, the natural world, there's fights for territory and domination and, you know, people and uh, animals and institutions get old and they, you know, get soft and they get, you know, the, the fruits of success or whatever and they get weak or whatever it is, right? And this plays out with empires. And then, you know, the dominant type of um, whatever we see with our, there are, you know, our economies and all these things, right? All these things are subject to change. And so whatever the reason, whoever's doing this or if they're acts of God or, you know, self-sabotage, America just is ripe for the picking. You see the American people, you see the, the system, you see the attitude, you see the incompetence like I say just go to Walmart like this you know that's all you need to know and see to realize that America is being taken down by itself maybe by the powers that be certainly by other countries yeah you know every when you're dominant other people are you know want to get you or want to take your position you're a target right if you see a team that's got sort of a dynasty you know, like the Golden State Warriors, for example, or the Patriots, you know, these teams that have won recently, right? You know, you're, or someone like LeBron James or, you know, some of these big names now, it's the Kansas City Chiefs. Teams play harder against you, right? They want to, you know, they, I mean, it's just motivation to beat you, right? There's this the element of that. Whenever you're on top, other people want to take you down, other countries. And so, you know, it's obviously happening. Some Whatever we can attribute to, I mean, some of it's just lethargy, some of it's just age. I mean, just look at the, the politicians we have. I mean, Trump and Biden are horrible. Neither one of them is a quality person. Neither one, neither one of them is a, a good leader or somebody that you can... I mean, we just don't have anybody. Think about any politician or think about any media personality. And I'm not even talking about a truther. I'm not talking about a media personality that's a truther. Like, you know, Walter Cronkite, Con Con <laughs> whatever his name is, right? Walter Cronkite. You know, these guys that I grew up, David Brinkley, these other, you know, news guys, they acted the part like they weren't good journalists, but there was some, you know, truth to power. News was more trusted people trusted the news back then of course there wasn't the internet there wasn't you know the truth movement any any of these things but these people at least acted the part right and they were trusted right now people trust you know podcasts like joe rogan or you know smaller channels and truther channels like Vine and you know these other you know whatever it is but people don't trust the the mainstream media and they're not even competent at their job. Like, very seldom you go, oh, this guy's doing a great job. Or you watch them, they're just, I mean, it's across the board. And these politicians are not good, you know, people, never mind, good at just faking their job to some extent where you can have faith in them. They're just ridiculous. And Kennedy, who was, you know, good at his interviews, people struggle with his voice, but that's not his problem. But then his take on Israel and just, you know, imploding and losing all credibility in the, in the, where he was gaining credibility, he lost it all, you know, and that's just typical. And so you don't have these inspirational figures. You don't have people out there, you know, the athletes themselves, the, you know, actors and, you know, people who have prominence all have scandals, all have bad characters. Like, who do you think about as being, oh, this is a quality person? some mainstream figure and I don't even mean as a truther you know just somebody that you think oh well these are quality people you know these are trustworthy people these are whatever good people you don't see it right there's no faith in 
each other and you know the establishment and the people that are in front of the cameras and whatever it might be right there's just an overall level of incompetence that uh, pervades america is what i'm saying and you know we don't have the blind faith that we used to have and the people themselves don't function in a way that you look at them as being competent you know every media personality that didn't call joe biden out of being senile when he ran against trump the first time in 2000 i mean before that in the primary against other democratic candidates the guy was not mentally there he was not somebody who was mentally functioning and they had slammed him before he had just you know before that four years before that he had been the vice president to obama and he was considered an incompetent boob a gaff magnet and a guy who was just clueless a guy caught plagiarizing you know no one thought of him as presidential no one you know he was never a front runner for the president but all of a sudden the establishment got behind him and not only ignored his his mental deterioration and his past history of being like a schlub they embraced the guy right it was bizarre and all these pretty much the whole all of mainstream media even fox news to some extent and you know didn't call him out and that was the fox news's job to do that and this is what i'm talking about and this is what uh you know this is everything that we know about incompetence in the media and all all over the you know every field of his celebrity culture and everywhere just ignoring and, and propping this guy up when he's horrible you know this is the best we have to offer and trump sucks like trump is just a selfish narcissistic petty like all you need to know about trump is and the world leaders will figure this out if he's re-elected they've already have you just have to you know trump wants people to lavish praise on him that's all he wants that's all he cares about he doesn't care about if that person's right he doesn't care about who's who he's embracing he just has to be so anybody who's a pro-trump person is good with trump if you criticize him even if you're you know a truth teller you're a good person he attacks you and goes after you right like that's trump that's 100 percent trump right that's the horrible person and a bad leader and so like just his personality he's petty and i, I found it funny because it made the mockery of the presidency but it's just an indication of a collapsing apocalyptic apocalyptic time in our civilization in our country right when you don't have anybody who's competent everybody sucks at what they do and you just see a you know sort of a uh, there's just nobody worth there's nobody out there representing america as being a worthy institution right we're not representing our country and saying you know showing everybody why america deserves to eat everybody else's food and absorb everyone else's resources and remain as you know we don't we're not like people aren't even happy right <laughs> they're not even happy and like you know the misery that um it takes to provide the lifestyle that we enjoy here as an you know evil empire and so you know it's collapsing like it's just whatever the reason is why i talk about all the time it's you know it should collapse and what that means for the world and the world you know the world model and all these things there's going to be a collapse right of the you know system that we're all 100 percent dependent on because it's not working it's not producing better people we're de-evolving right we're getting weaker and stupider and in, in every possible way if the people are the you know the product of a system if the people are getting worse that means the system has to come down and you know it's if the system is going against the divine will and laws it's going to take you in the wrong direction and people aren't becoming more and more spiritual and more and more saintly They're becoming more and more selfish and more and more entitled and more and more weak and all these things and so when that happens you know it's the people that are will, will you know are when you have weaker and, and less competent people then the system can't function and so the system is you know making uh is producing the product which is the people and the people are producing the, the product which is the system and together they're just we're going down uh, you know into this land of idiocracy right and you know with all that has comes collapse and in any you know in any sphere and certainly in this kind of sphere and it's you know we're headed that way whatever the causes whatever the reason you know whether it's some foreign government or you divine will or people themselves or false flaggy stuff or whatever's happening here is going to happen like it's going to happen one way or another 
Anyways, only spirituality will save this world. It's Paravano, definitely important for the apocalypse. And the ascension, everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.